So we're going to mount the samples now on the sample holder that will carry them into the uh, instrument. And I'm just going to use uh, some double-sided tape. It's the same sort of conductive tape that we use to uh, uh, adhere samples to the sample holder in the microscopes. This is just a stainless steel bar that's going to go into the chamber. And the easiest way to do it is with adhesive. And the adhesive pumps down fairly rapidly in the vacuum system. It's not a problem. Now, we are ready to place the sample into the chamber. That's it. And then, and then you can withdraw it back, pull it back into the thing as though we're loading it. And then you can close the door. And you're going to, you're going to close these, but not tightly, uh, because there's still nitrogen in the water bottle flowing. Trying to escape out here, so we have to hold the pressurized edge. So we just do it like that, and then we would hit the pump button on the computer. So Normally you would, you would stand it and stand here like this. Just, it's easiest to give it a push like that. Just you know, supporting it and just letting it catch. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah, you just, you just, you know, you just give it a little push so the, so that the uh, vacuum can catch it. And then when you're here by yourself, what you should do, you can see that this is dark blue. The, uh, the area where we just put the sample is indicated on the computer screen is a dark blue. So that's the roughing line, that's channel 3. And when that gets down to one tour, then you see the dark blue area turn light blue. Um, there we go. Now, now it's just it's turned light blue now. So now the roughing line is down below one tour. So now you can be confident that it's pumping properly. You walk out and leave it. All right, and this brings us to the uh, manual operating page, which is what we use to do the first manipulation of the sample and set up the analysis. Uh, so we're going to, we have the sample now pumped down in the uh, turbo pumped four chamber. That's this part of the instrument. And now we're going to move it into the analytical uh, part of the instrument, which is ion pumped. And so you can go ahead and open the valve connecting them. That's uh, STCSAC valve. Yeah, you just click there. This one. Uh -huh. And that will take about uh, 20 seconds to open. There's actually a stainless steel door that separates this turbo pumped four chamber, which is down in the 10 to the minus 8 tor range, from the analytical chamber, which is 10 to the minus 9 tor range. And once that's open, then we can move the sample in and then detach it, put the transfer on, and then take the transfer arm out. All right, so now that gate, that gate valve is open now. Yeah, so that's open. So now you can start moving the sample into the analytical chamber. Okay. What? How? How? How what? I mean, moving how to move it in. Yes. You're going to use this uh, this here, and you're just going to turn that. Uh, you'll see it actually through the windows in the instrument at the moment. You didn't take your gloves off, too. Uh, well, it's not helping you. Sorry. So yeah, you can just start turning that, and you'll see it in that window after a little while. And then uh, ultimately you'll... Later on, you can actually have a seat and look at it through the lower window. It doesn't matter how fast or slow you move this. Three, three steps to running the instrument. Step one, we get the sample in. Step two, we're going to find a good position for each sample for analysis. And then step three, we're going to tell it what analysis we want to run. So, so we, can, we can see that which sample is now at position. Yes. Yeah, because there are three samples. That's right. right. So we're going to turn on the TV. And we're going to turn on the charge neutralizer filament, which will also be
give us a little bit of extra light to help us see what's going on. So you can scroll up the page a little bit here on the computer. And scroll up a little. And uh, we can get to the a little bit more. There we are, the charge neutralizer. You can turn that on by clicking on. And now, because you've just loaded the sample and you had to get it off the transfer arm, you moved it to the extreme left, so it's sitting way off to the side of the chamber. So if you take the control box again and move it back to the right, we'll see it on the TV screen. So you're going to press right and then left. That's how you go fast right. Okay. We'll Camera see. position yeah. is this. Yes. Yeah. There we are. There's the edge of the bar. And there's one of your samples coming into view. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we have to we have to get a good height for analysis on this sample because the beam the beam only strikes a small area of the sample and it's coming in at an angle. So if the height of the sample is wrong, the beam will be striking the wrong part of the sample. It won't be under the detector. So finding a good height is itself a two-step process. The first thing we're going to do is just adjust the height so that the picture is in focus here. Because the focus of the camera is set up so that when it's about the right height, it's going to be in focus. So actually, is we're going to use the signal we get from the sample to do the fine adjustment. We just want to get it close to being at the right height. So, so now we can zoom back out again so you can see the sample. And now we're going to actually turn on the x-ray and start to get signals and uh, find what the exact best position for each one is and save those positions. What we do now is turn on the x-ray. So if you zoom, if you scroll up just a little, here we are. Uh, we want to switch from magnesium to the mono aluminum. So we're switching to the monochromated aluminum filament. Uh oh. Yeah. And so now that is on. So now you can actually turn it on. We want to uh, find now uh, positions for analysis. So we need to select an element in the sample that will give us a strong signal. Later on, we'll be looking for all the elements. But right now, we're just going to select one element that should give us a strong signal. And we'll use the signal that element is giving us to fine tune this position. We can begin to set up your experiment. And normally, when you reach this page, there will be some sort of flow chart over here. Because this has an automatic stage, we're going to be telling it to you know, run this analysis, then move here, run this analysis, and so on. And you do that by building a flow chart. Right? So normally, what we do. We think about all the elements that we want to see and where they appear in the spectrum. You've, you've done this before. You've done some XPH before, right? So, uh, and we would run a survey scan and just see what's there and how much of it. And then we would come back and later make decisions about what we want to run high resolution sound. So you need to pull this out until you can see this end of the bar through that window. Can you see it now? Or? Yeah. See it now? Okay, and I'm also going to move all the way to the left because that's the engage disengage position. Is when this thing is all the way over, that's when this can come in. So I'm just going to move it all the way to the left. I don't even need to look at it, it stops by itself. So you can keep rolling that in. So now the only question is whether the bar is at the right height. So at this point, it should be, it should be ready to, to withdraw. So you can go ahead and pull it out. There it goes. We got it. And just bring it all the way back until you get a green light on the uh, on the uh, LED at the end of the arm there. And now we can close the door. Close SPC SAC, and then when that closes, we can bend it. Now you're going to just lift up on it a little bit and swing it open. Yep. And then leave it. Yep. Okay. And then you can roll the uh, sample out and fully expose.
expose it, we can clean the whole sample out. And uh, just like we were doing inside the chamber, you want to take it off by sliding it sideways. This will be straight towards you. 